Hello, and welcome to Illumination Podcast with Nick and Kisma. I'm Nick, and today we are wrapping up our extended series on working with the law, a book by Raymond Hollowell and his 11 Truth Principles. This is part 11, wrapping it up with the law of obedience. Hello and welcome to Illumination Podcast with Nick and Kizma, bringing you ancient wisdom for modern day success so that you can have the mindset to get your life and business set. As always, thank you for tuning in. And if you're new to the podcast, take a quick second to hit the subscribe button in iTunes, SoundCloud, or Stitcher. Uh, if you want to get the inside info for this in every episode, as well as some free gifts, go to illuminationacademy.net forward slash podcasts. And now let's dive in to get your mindset for your life and business set. Hello there, Kizma. Hello. Are we really going to be obedient today? This is a tough law for me. It, I'm this not is, an obedient one. Yeah, I'm with you. This, but when we talked about it, I was like, yeah, this is good. This is so good because it's getting to the truth. It's really getting to the kernel of the truth. It really is. It, it gets to a lot of pieces that are really important in this. And yeah. I don't know. I mean, in a certain way, I am kind of a rule follower. Like I like to follow the rules. You know, I follow, I follow you recipes. You are. I'm not. Um, I like to follow. I like to follow <laughs> through because I. you know what? You know why I like that, though, is because I like the the idea of getting repeatable results. Oh, that's good. So I feel like, okay, if like somebody puts a recipe in front of me, if there's something that's like way off on mm-hmm. it, then yeah, I might make some changes. But but after I want to make it the way that they intended the first time. Mm-hmm. And, and then to see like, oh, like what did they have in mind? Like, how does it come out? You know, and then to start to make my adjustments mm-hmm. to it. That's kind of how I roll. Mm-hmm. And you know, I always make, I add spice when yeah, you... Yeah, don't do that. I, I don't know. do that anymore. Add a little spice. You don't like when I change your favorite recipes. No, I don't. Why would you? Why would you change? It makes no sense to me. So back to the law of obedience. <laughs> like, why would you not obey my taste buds? <laughs> <laughs> makes no sense. I know. But then you never know when there's a little tweak that might just make it that much better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not so much. Not to, uh, to me. So this is this is where I got excited in talking about this law is that it, for those of you that know me really well, I break I break rules. Um, yet I'm all about the highest and best, right? But there's just there's things where I'm always looking for a faster way, or I don't take human man rules um, as absolute. However, this is a time where we don't break the rule when we obey. There's a time to obey, and there's a time to disobey. And when we're working with the universe. And the universal laws and source spirit, it's like let go and obey with so much love and gratitude that these laws are there operating for us as long as we're working with them. Yeah. And this obedience word has a charge to it. It does. Yeah. 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 And it, like you you said it, like right in the title, working with the law, Yeah, right? So it is working with it. Mm-hmm. And you know, that's funny. Like my mind starts to do that very same thing is like, wants to change it. It mm-hmm. wants to, mm-hmm. wants to break the little rules, mm-hmm. you know, and like, I don't like being told what to do. Anybody who knows me knows I do not like being told yeah, what no. to do. Um, and when, <laughs> in this context, we really encourage you to look at, and we're going to break down why, so you can make, make peace with that word obedience. And, and if you're going to obey something, this is the thing to obey. Okay. Right at, right in the very beginning of the chapter. Uh, well, he starts from a quote from Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah, actually. Mm -hmm. And it says, obey my voice and I will be your God and ye shall be my people. And then he follows it to say, to be ushered into turmoil, blindly toil a few years and then go out into uncertainty is surely not the purpose of man's existence. Mm. life must mean more than this. And it does mean more. Man should be a builder. And to him is given all the materials out of which to construct the kind of life he desires to live. He builds in wisdom or in ignorance, according to his obedience, according to his understanding of a divine law and the use of it in his daily life. Nice. Right? So I love Mm. that he starts with that. 
understanding of a divine law and the daily use of it in his life. That's right. The yeah. Daily the, use. It really is. The daily use, man, makes all the difference. Yeah. Well, I think that's that's a big theme in this whole series is that these are not just some esoteric thought that it's like nice to understand and hear about it. These are laws that operate in and through your daily life, like in the thing, all the way through all of your mundane activities, all the things that you would never think would have any kind of spiritual component to them. These invisible laws operate in all of those little hidden places. You're either with it or you're against it, whether you know it or not. Right. So he works with it or against it um, according to his obedience. Right. And and I love that he's, you know, blindly toil a few years and then go out into uncertainty surely is not the purpose of man's existence. Mm. You know, and it's like to wander aimlessly mm-hmm. and and then to, you know, who knows what afterwards. It's right. like our time here is so short already and he's giving us these instructions, these principles in order to construct a life and build a life that is right. really what we, what we desire. I love that he said that there too, the kind of life he desires to live. Not, not, he doesn't say the kind of life that he ought to live or he's supposed to live or or anything. Right. He's saying desires, you choose, you get to choose. Yeah. So it makes me feel a little bit better about this obedience (laughs) thing already right off the bat. You desire it. Yeah. 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 Perhaps in no way has religion gone so far astray as in its conception or understanding of God, whether it be the God of the Christians or of the heathen, instead of recognizing that the supreme intelligence is law, operating according to and as surely as the laws of nature, men have created in their ideas a God who is partial, subject to appeal from saint and sinner alike, a God who can be persuaded and bargained with a God who gives life and takes it away, a God who heals sickness and causes it, a God who impoverishes and enriches, a God who rewards and punishes. And having accepted this wrong idea, it has made prayer largely a matter of doubts, lacking in that strong assurance that a thing will be so because it is according to divine law. Mm. So this is a way that I think people try to bend the law. They try to, they try to make their own recipes around it, you know? Well, you know, it's, it's classic. It's like, it just get me through this gig and I'll never drink again. Yeah. It's that bargaining (laughs) prayer. You know, I promise like, yeah, I'll be a good person if you get me the money to pay my rent or could you do this God? And then I'll do that. Like, why are we bargaining? Why do we think who even taught us to pray that way? It's really interesting. Yeah, it is really interesting, this bargaining kind of attitude. You know where I think it gets a little twisted up is actually back in um, some of the other laws where it's like like for like the law of karma. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, if you want more of this, then you give more. If you want more love in your life, give more love in your life. Yes. You know, so th- I think that's a place where some people get that a little twisted up. They they misunderstanding this law for. You know, I think they're just bargaining with God. No, I don't think they understand the law at all. I think they just like, come on, God, like I, I promise if you just give me this, because it's it, again, rather than just praying to, to give thanks and to, like he said, the, the life you desire state it. this is what I desire and thank you. And then let the prayers be about having the strength to stay on the path. Let, let the prayers be the strength to obey the universal laws. Let the prayers be about support. Yeah. But once you put it out there, it's there. Like God, source, universe, spirit has heard and is responding. Now it's us, it's up to us, which is why I actually do love this law to work with the law. Right. Right. And his whole bur- book titled Working with the Law, it's it's no wonder that the law of obedience is the final one. Yeah. It, it's yeah, it's right towards the end here. It's a super powerful uh it's it really is mm-hmm. like really powerful and important to remember. Um yeah, that's that bargaining kind of thing. Like that's where people are trying to bend the rules or right. trying to work around it. They're trying to find a loophole, right. I think is the way to right. put it, you know? Um, and it's funny because it reduces God to like a Santa Claus, <laughs> right? So, which is confused, like Santa Claus, you know, like the parents don't tell the kids necessarily, like like some kids 
the parents tell the kids the things came from Santa Claus. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then, you know, one kid gets an iPad, another gets kid gets a pair of socks and they're like, well, like what's up with that? Like, yeah. why is Santa Claus not like, right? because you weren't good, right? <laughs> you were only good enough for the pair of socks. That's like, that right. Sucks. You know, yeah. it's a drag. And I get that that can be like mm -hmm. really confusing for kids and, and everything, but that's adults are doing the same thing. Right. You know, it's like, well, why, why does this person have this? Why does this ever, this, ever this yeah. person, everything comes so easy for them. Why do they they have all that, but they just, we only see what we see. And, yeah. and I think if you look at it from that perspective, you know, you can see that we're doing the exact same thing. And then right. we're trying to find the loophole. Like, what do I need to do to get the iPad? <laughs> you know, what do I need to do to get the, you know, the job or the, or the life or that I, that, right. that other person has. And it, and it, it makes this really weird conversation of bartering and bargaining mm -hmm. and all kinds of weird agreements that we make with this power when it can be so much simpler, so much simpler, so much more powerful too. Right. The word obey means to submit to rule or to comply with orders or instructions. See that I love order. You know me, I love order. So I can, <laughs> you and comply. Me both. Yeah. I can comply with the order and the universal order. I think that's where we drop in is like, this is the universal order. This is God's order. This is like source order. Like, why would you want to go against that? Like when I say that, I'm like, oh my gosh, like, why would I ever want to go against that order? Right. And the instructions, like the instructions are there. Like the instructions are in all the books. Mm -hmm. like the instructions are given out. Um, so that's, I mean, that's, I, I do like recipes. Like I like to follow recipes, you know? So it, it just, to me, like that's the fun kind of sciency part of it, of looking to get repeatable right. results, you know, and you see it enough times. I see enough times where I practice the law of decrease and everything in my life shrinks and it gets really stressful as opposed to the times when I practice the law of increase and everything right. starts to expand and everything's happier. It, works. it like, it works every time. Yeah. I've never seen it not work. I know. So that's the exciting part. And it's like, okay, yeah, like I can obey that. I'll follow that recipe. Um, this is a good, I thought like a good way to highlight here. He says, as we look into the home, we see the mother training her child into habits of discipline. Tomorrow, we see a happy mother because her child has grown into youth and manhood and has earned success. A success because back in the beginning of his life, the seed of obedience was placed there, which brought forth respect, obedience, and unselfish thought. On the other hand, we may see where others fail because they have been allowed to grow up being disobedient, disrespectful, and selfish. Mm -hmm. And I think there's something to that. I think that I think that when that if we're not practicing that in our life and in our relationships, it, it, at the minimum, like respect, you know, certainly there's there's a little room for wiggle around obedience with certain things, mm -hmm. but um, but with respect, that that kind of that lack of discipline will definitely ripple out into how we relate to the world, how we relate to a God or mm -hmm. the order or the supreme intelligence right. or whatever one you, you want to call that. I think there's something to be said for that. Mm -hmm. We see in nature the answer. She has no troubles she cannot overcome. She has no problems she cannot solve. She okay, pause there. This is really important. <laughs> nature doesn't have any problems that she can't overcome. No troubles that she can't solve. That's right. No. Nope. We no. are nature. We are nature. It's okay. We, we are nature. No burdens she cannot bear. Mm. No tasks she cannot perform. Why? All her operations are governed by the mighty law of harmony and order, which constantly removes every discord, which heals all diseases, which rights every wrong, which supplies every need. Harmony. Beautiful. It's there. Mm -hmm. Like it's there. And mm -hmm. I think that's... um. I love, you know, I, I say this to my students a lot in trainings when we're talking about manifesting and prosperity and abundance is to check out nature because when we see nature, and this is just such a perfect example, and we understand the power of nature and that we are nature. So why would we not enjoy the same powers and abundance that nature does? Well, we mess it up with our conditioned mind and our doubt and our fear and jealousy and all that stuff. Yeah. We always have the choice mm -hmm. to be in harmony with it or to be in disharmony we do. with it. Yeah. Um, you can't, you, we can never not be part of nature though. Exactly. You know? So it's working with the law or against it. It's working with nature or against it. It's obeying the laws 
or not. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, that, that same theme came up in another, just in a related kind of topic about human beings and how there was this uh, slideshow of these macro images of uh, snowflakes. And it just shows how ridiculously perfect a single sl- snowflake so is. And there's all different. They're like, it's mind just, blowing. It really it, it is, really is mm-hmm. mind blowing. Like, oh, this stuff is falling from the sky, and we're but it's getting, perfect, right? We're getting all bummed out because it's like, oh man, like the roads are going to be slippery. It's going to be yeah. a pain in the butt to clean it off your car or whatever. Not here in Southern California, <laughs> but we used to deal with that. Anyway, we put all this stuff around it. Yet, right on, on that deepest level, it's just impossibly perfect. Yeah. And and then I said, P.S. You know, because I shared it because I thought like that's so cool. You know, like like that's something to think about. Um, and I said, well, P.S. You know, you're part of nature, this perfection. And I definitely saw some resistance around that. No, mm. humans aren't perfect. Blah 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 blah, and all this kind of stuff. But it's like, no, humans are operating by the same laws. Yeah. And what's happening if when we see that imperfection or those challenges or you know difficult personalities or people who are really stuck in a bad place, like that is still the laws operating perfectly through that human being. Exactly. It is absolutely perfect. It could yeah. never not be. And I think that's mm. kind of frustrating sometimes, you know, and there is a paradox to that of the work that we do to constantly um, align in a more harmonious way. I think it'd be a good way mm. to put it. It's true. <sighs> so how do we put this to everyday use? This law of obedience Well, let's see here. I mean, I think first and foremost is to recognize that the laws exist. They're not changing. That that's important. They are not changing. Yeah. They we it's they're not a game that we're to go out and try to beat or hack. There's no hacking the universal laws. There really is no hacking Mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. You know, there's ways. There's hacks to get yourself into harmony with them. That I'll I'll accept. Yep. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is the attitude shift, like where you're, you don't, don't try not to look at yourself as separate from that and recognize that that is an unchangeable thing. So it puts the work on you Mm -hmm. in the most empowering way possible. It's every human being's job and honor for that matter to, to work with the law, to obey the law, to be right. in harmony with these laws and yeah. to use them in the most beautiful way possible, like to create whatever it is that you desire in the world. Yeah. Right. So that's that mindset shift, I think, is the first part is to recognize that the laws aren't the thing that's changing, although it can seem that way because it's really confusing because sometimes you're getting what you want and things are working great. And sometimes you're not. And then it's kind of a bummer. But that's not that's not because the laws are changing. It's because you're changing. Exactly. Right. The attitude, the energy, the actions, the words. Etc. Right. Mm-hmm. And the more consistently that you can stay with that, mm-hmm. like the consistency is a really big key talks about discipline throughout this book. Um, and that consistency is key because it continues to like allow you to align with it and allows you to stay in more harmony with it. And it allows you to build those muscles around it. So I think that's, that's pretty hard. I mean, I, that's like pretty important to remember that, you know, trying to stay as consistent as possible as much as you're in and out or trying to like skirt the issue. Well, the consistent action will yield consistent results and the the attitude of the action, the energy of the action, the flow of the action, according to the laws or against it will create the results. Yeah. And the inquiry though, see, that's a part I think that's important is um, sometimes people see consistency and they like, I'm being really consistent, but what they're actually being is obstinate. Mm -hmm. Obstinate, stubborn, not um, breaking out of the box, not seeing the potential. Yeah. yeah. And, and if there's one thing that our Vedanta teachings have always taught us, it's it's to always question and inquire. Right. But this, what that attitude shift does is to really f- put the focus in the right place. The laws are not complicated. They're laid out beautifully in this book and there are plenty of them in here. Uh, certainly there are more, but there's plenty in just in this book to really give you a lot to think about and work on. So when you shift the focus to yourself and, and ask the question, okay, well, where am I resisting this? Where am I? uh, That's, I, I think that's a big piece because if we don't have what we want, we're resisting it. Right. Or we're not working with the law or we're, we're in our own opinion of how things should or shouldn't look. And that receptivity of, 
you align with the universal laws, God, source, spirit, you're receiving and you're, you're open to receiving things that might look different than you think there's magic that happens there. So much magic. Mm -hmm. It's, it's such a big game changer. He highlights it here in an interesting way. He says, if we are to obey the spirit within us, rather than the conditions about us, then the law requires us to first think things into existence from with the within before we shall see them on the without. So when we experience that inner, you know, maybe just frustration or whatever those things are that are going on inside of us, the inner conflicts and things like that, it gives us that opportunity to align and, and really just refocus it. Okay, what's going on inside of me that I can shift to align? I like that. I always say, you know, failure is just an opportunity to talk to the universe one more time <laughs> and say, okay, what, what's required to shift? Yeah. Well, this is beautiful. So the law of obedience, work with the law, basically work with the universal laws. Don't try and change them. Avoid going against them. The more that you work with it, the easier life is going to be. That's, that's exactly what he's saying here. And he's also saying that you already know. Mm. Disobedience to the law is refusal to do what we know is right. Mm -hmm. We all know the right but we do not always do it because it seems to interfere or delay our immediate attainment of the object that we see. Mm. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> like, Read written. that again. That's important. <laughs> this is important. This is important. Yeah, it's so true. I mean, all these years later, it still rings true. Disobedience to the law is refusal to do what we know is right. It, it's not your conscience, you know, mm -hmm. that you already know that little voice within already knows. Uh, we all know the right, but we do not always do it because it seems to interfere or delay our immediate attainment of the object we see. Mm. Oh, this is even before the internet age. Right. <laughs> our click button culture. But um, yeah, it's so true. Wow. Amazing. It's not happening fast enough. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. And, right. and so then we try to like bargain or we try to do something. And we lose the power. Yeah. Instead of staying in it. Well, what's our illuminated thought for this, for this episode? The illuminated thought for this episode is have faith. Oh, that's really good. Right. It is because this, this, what this law of obedience really is about is faith and devo and devotion. Mm -hmm. um, but it's important to have a more refined understanding of faith. This is not the blind faith or devotion or worship without any understanding. It's about inquiring. Mm -hmm. and going deeper. It, always going deeper and looking deep within ourselves to find the harmony with yeah. these laws. And then, and then to create, because what that will do is create a greater sense of trust and faith in the laws and a greater sense of trust and faith in yourself. That's beautiful. So it is about having faith. Having faith. It's yeah. possible. Hashtag it's possible. Hashtag it's possible. Oh, I love this. Well... That's a wrap for the series of working with the law. It is 11 truth principles for successful living. And it's been over a year that we recorded these it in has. and out different episodes. And the book is so worth picking up Raymond Hollywell's working with the law and, and going back and listening. I think the first one started back in like episode 123 or something around there. I, again, always going back to Whatever your word is, God, universe, spirit, source, there is a supreme energy and essence that when we work with it, life is so much easier. So why not work with it? Why, like, not? why yeah. not get over ourselves and everything that we think should be and just work with it? Yeah, it, it's so it's so much about getting out of that need to be right and yeah. just letting ourselves like that's that's the beauty I think of this law to me is like. There's no room for any need to be right in this. There's no room for There's no right. room for that stubbornness either. Yeah. It is really about being in the flow. You put it so beautifully at the beginning. It's about being in the flow and yeah. being in harmony with yeah. it. So hope you enjoyed this. Our beautiful listeners, please feel free to share this with someone you know. Uh, possibly even pop into iTunes and give us a rating and review. And as always, stay tuned for our next episode of Illumination Podcast. Peace. Namaste. Hey, thanks for jamming with us today. And if you enjoy Illumination Podcast, please go ahead and share it with someone you love. 
give us a rating, review, download our podcast. And remember, you can find us at illuminationacademy.net forward slash podcasts. Talk to you soon. Namaste. Namaste.